positioning the moment. A civil society is free, democratic, lawful, and uninhibited in its exchange of diverse ideas. The prerequisite of a democratic society is the concept of the public sphere, a free and vibrant space that facilitates the forum of the exchange of diverse opinions and viewpoints for the greater good of society. This marketplace of ideas is, the full, is full of diverse voices and it's the lifeblood of a civil society. These freedoms of democracy and culture are guaranteed, fostered, and protected by the United States Constitution's First Amendment, freedom of expression, and the 14th Amendment, right to citizenship, and every legal citizen in this society, regardless of race, regardless of gender, religion, etc., is entitled to these rights. To help advance these constitutional rights, protest movements led by the so-called marginalized statistical minorities, I have to do my quotes, minorities, predominantly African Americans, brought forth greater political responses by forcing the, US the United States government to establish the Civil Rights Act of 1964. These advancements of the constitutional amendments were necessary because as Sharon Patton said, the landmark civil, these landmark civil rights decisions which favored the equality of non-white Americans specifically African Americans, such as Brown versus the Board of Education, made in the 1950s by the United States Supreme Court, were undermined by racist laws. Major social events such as civil rights movements, the Vietnam War, and the Cultural Revolution of the 60s and 70s brought forth renewed black ideological perspectives that were embodied by slogans such as black power and power to the people and the mass society of the so-called marginalized blacks in America were beginning to elevate to another level of consciousness. Many events and movements of this socio-cultural and political period frequently led to racial conflict, riots throughout inner cities across the United States. There were many different perspectives that influenced the direction of the black political ideology during this time. Many African-American citizens felt that, non that a nonviolent approach would be the appropriate method when fighting for, the, for civil rights. Many more felt that the language of their oppressor was not that of a passive voice, but that of bloodshed. And, the fight, and to fight this brutal murderer nonviolently would be a form of suicide. The climate of political struggle and cultural unrest created a time ripe for the resurrection of the spirit of Garveyism and the rebirth of the black pride and self-determination that was vibrant during the 20s and 30s and the new Negro movement. Just as the people of the American society were affected, so were the artists of the black arts movement in the 60s and 70s, dramatically influenced by social and political events of that day. It sounded like I was quoting something from last year, right? Greetings, Porter Colloquium supporters. This year's conference will analyze the ideological influences portrayed through the semiotic statements and visual communications brought forth through the visual language and culture of the black arts movement during the 60s and 70s, strongly influenced by the civil rights and black power movements. The members of BAM use symbolic protest as a driving force to communicate cultural, political, and economic messages to the grassroots while taking a stand against the political structure of the American society. There were significant components that herald the black arts movement into the position of one of the most prominent and productive artistically innovative periods of African American history where the establishment of the artist groups and organizations as rallying forces and effective use of symbolism in protest arts as a voice in the political public sphere. This dialogue to, over the course of this weekend will include the exploration and connection in the motivating, evaluating the motivating factors that cause the black ideology movement to respond to the social climate and political struggles of the 60s and 70s, to the socio-cultural, 
political economic movements of exp that are experienced through the prevalent symbolic messages and protest and rebellion communicated through and in and out of the works of many of the African-American artists today in the 21st century. On behalf of the Department of Art, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you to the 27th annual James A. Porter Colloquium African-American Arts. Since 1990, the colloquium has been respected as a nucleus for this public sphere, for scholars, artists, curators, cultural critics, collectors, and others in the field of African-American art and visual culture. This forum represents the diverse ideals of the artistic heritage and con contributions by persons of African descent in America. I'm humbled. And I'm honored to have participated with this year's colloquium. I would like to offer congratulations to Professor Carmichael, who chaired our uh, faculty committee. I would also like to recognize the 2016 executive committee, as well as the department, departmental faculty coordinating committee. and the production teams, all, who, all whom work diligently to coordinate this year's forum. Thanks also to each conference presenter for demonstrating such devotion to the advancement of African-American art. And gratitude must be given to Dr. Gwendolyn Everett, our Associate Dean for the Division of Fine Arts, for her unwavering commitment to and support of and guidance for a successful conference and a gala tomorrow. I would like to recognize Dr. Bernard Mayer, Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences. <laughs> as well as Dr. Anthony Wutu, our Provost and Chief Academic Officer. <laughs> and Dr. Wayne Frederick, our University President. All of, and all of their respective offices for continuing the support of all of our efforts. And most special recognition and appreciation has to be given, and Dr. Coleman will remember that because in 2009, I was actually, what I just read actually was a contribution to uh, a doctoral research study that I was doing on his behalf, under his tutelage. Um, I would like to especially recognize Dr. Coleman, founder and visionary for the James A. Porter Colloquium. <laughs> We welcome you all and ask for your continued support of our artistry and our scholarship. Furthermore, we challenge all participants and supporters to share these experiences gained through this conference with other communities, with other publics, and societies as you travel. This is the perpetuation of the spirit of the James A. Porter Colloquium. Now, as I transition into our program, I would like to give a brief introduction in respect to our moderator for the day, Professor Curly Holton. Professor Curly Holton is, an exec is the executive director of the David, Drisc the David C. Driscoll Center, the University of Maryland in College Park. He's also, oh, and if Dr. Driscoll is here, I would like to definitely recognize him for all of his hard work, his, his, his lifetime of labor. I could not. Allow that moment to pass. You see me grinning from ear to ear, so I apologize. Professor Holton is also a distinguished artist in residence at the University of Maryland. Prior to coming to the University of Maryland, Professor Houghton uh, came from the college, came from Lafayette College in Eastern PA, where he served as the David M. and Linda Roth Professor of Art and founding director of the Experimental Printmaking Institute, EPI. Professor Houghton also served as senior artist in residence in the Department of Art, engaging with faculty and students in the collaborative projects between the department and the Driscoll Center. An, an artist, scholar, Professor Houghton is an internationally renowned printmaker and painter 
whose work has been exhibited professionally for over 25 years in more than 60 one-person shows and over 100 group shows in such prestigious national and international venues as the 7th International Banal in Cairo, Egypt, to say the least. He's earned his MFA with honors at Kent State University and his BFA from Cleveland Institute of Art and Drawing Printmaking. Without further ado, I would like, it gives me great pleasure to present you Professor Holton. Well, thank you. And of course, the Driscoll Center is honored to be a partner in the James Porter Colloquium. And we've done that for many years, and we look forward to a long future of partnering with that, uh, the efforts of the colloquium. Last night, we had a phenomenal presentation by Dr. Leslie King Hammond to begin this, uh, the colloquium and a celebration of the legacy, not only of uh, Dr. Porter, but one of his premier students, Dr. David C. Driscoll. So my role is to introduce um, our panelists and our presenters. And the first one is presenting a lecture titled The Power to the People, The Art of Black Power. Dr. Lisa Gail Collins, PhD, Professor of Art at Vassar College. Lisa Gail Collins, who joined Vassar faculty in 1998, teaches interdisciplinary courses in American art, social and cultural history, with an emphasis on African-American lives, creativity, and everyday life. A femi feminist thought, activism, social and cultural movements in the United States. She received her BA in art history from Dartmouth College and her PhD in American Studies from the University of Minnesota. Ms. Collins is the author of the important publication, The Art of History, African-American Women Artists, Engage the Past, this is published by Rutgers University Press in uh, 2003, and The Art Artifacts in African Americans, Context and Criticism, Michigan State University in 2007. And she is co-editor with Margot Natalie Crawford of New Thoughts on the Black Arts Movement, which will be, is published by Rutgers University in 2006. Without any further ado, Dr. Collins. Thank you. 